It's the Cube. Covering Sapphire Now 2017. Brought to you by SAP Cloud Platform and HANA Enterprise Cloud. Hey, welcome back everyone to our special Sapphire Now 2017 coverage in our Palo Alto studios. We have folks on the ground in Orlando. It's the third day of Sapphire Now and we're bringing our friends and experts inside our new 4,500 square foot studio where we're starting to get our action going and covering uh, events anywhere they are from here. If we can't get there, we'll, we'll, we'll do it from here in Palo Alto. Our next guest is Satyan Sangani, CEO of Elation, a hot startup uh, funded by Custano Ventures. Um, Catalyst, Data Collective, and I think Andreessen Horowitz is also an investor. That's right. Such a, welcome to theCUBE uh, conversation Thank here. Thank you for having me. So we're doing the special coverage and I wanted to bring you in and discuss Sapphire now as it relates to the context of the biggest wave hitting the industry, which waves are one's cloud, we've known that for a while. People are surfing that one. Yeah. Then the data wave is coming fast and I think this is a completely different animal in the sense of it's going to look different but be just as big. Your business is in the data business. You help companies figure this out. Give us the update on, first take a minute to talk about Elation for the folks who aren't following you, what you guys do, and, and then let's talk about data. Yeah, yeah, for, so for those of you that don't know about what Elation is, it's basically a data catalog. Um, you know, if you think about all of the databases that exist in an enterprise, uh, stuff on-prem, stuff in the cloud, all of the BI tools like Tableau and MicroStrategy and business objects, I mean, you've got a lot of data that sits inside the enterprise today and a wide variety of legacy and modern tools. And what Elation does is it creates a catalog, uh, crawling all of those systems like mm -hmm. Google crawls the web, and effectively looks at all the logs inside of those systems to understand how the data is interrelated, and we create this data social graph, and it kind of looks. Is it metadata catalog? It, we call you know we don't use the word metadata because metadata is the word that people use when you know that's that's Johnny back in the corner office, right? And uh, people don't want to talk about metadata. If you're a business person, you think about metadata, and you're like, I don't. Not that my was, thing. So right? you guys are democratizing what data means to an organization. That's right, we just like to talk about context. We're, we, we basically say, look, in the same way that information, or in the same way when you're eating your food, mm -hmm. you need you know, organic labeling to understand whether or not that's good or bad. You know, we have on some level a provenance problem, a trust problem inside of data in the enterprise, and you need a layer of you know, trust and understanding and context. So you guys are a SaaS, or you guys are a SaaS solution, or are you a Software subscription. We do both. Uh, most of the business is actually on-prem because most okay. of the people that have the problem that Elation solves are you know, very big, complicated institutions mm -hmm. or institutions with a lot of data or a lot of people trying to analyze it. Mm -hmm. um, but we do also have a SaaS offering and actually that's how we intersect with uh, SAP AltaScale. Um, and so we, we have a cloud-based mm -hmm. SaaS offering that we work with. And talk about your relationship with SAP because you kind of backdoored in through an acquisition. Quickly note that and we'll get into the conversation. Yeah, that's right. So AltaScale, two big intersections, uh, big data, and then they do big data in the cloud. Uh, SAP acquired them last year, and what we do is we provide a front-end capability for people to access that data in the cloud, so that as analysts want to analyze that data, as data governance mm -hmm. folks want to manage that data, we provide them with a single catalog to do that. So talk about the dynamics in the industry, because SAP, clearly the big news there is the Leonardo, they're trying to create this framework. Um, we just announced an alpha because everyone's got these names of uh, dead creative geniuses. We just introduced yeah. our Nostradamus product. Um, since they have Leonardo and That's SAP's right. got Einstein and IBM's got Watson and Informatica's got Claire. So who thought maybe we'd just get our own version. But anyway, everyone's got some sort of like bot or like AI program. Yep. I mean, I get that, but the reality is, the trend is they're trying to create a, a tool chest, a platform, uh, replatforming around tooling. Yeah. To make things easier. Yeah. Uh, you have a lot of work in this area through relation, try to make things easier. Yep. And also they got the cloud on-premise, HANA, enterprise cloud, SAP cloud platform, meaning developers. So the convergence between developers, cloud, and data are happening. What's your take on that strategy? Do you think SAP's got a good move by going multi-cloud or or should they should be taking a different approach? Well, I, th I think they have to. I mean, I think the economics in cloud and the manageability, uh, you know, really the human economics and being able to have more and more being managed by third party providers that are, you know, effectively like AWS and have the skill and the capability to manage at scale. And you just really can't compete if you're SAP and you can't compete if your customers are buying 
and assembling the toolkits on premise. So, so they've got to go there, and I think every IT provider has got to go to the there. cloud. You mean they've got to go to the cloud? I think there's no question about it. And you know, I think that's that's I think this point of foregone conclusion in the world of enterprise IT. Yeah, it's pretty pretty obvious. I mean, hybrid cloud is happening because it's really a gateway to multi cloud. This is some issues. We're going to have Bill Norton, a uh, guest in later, talk about latency, multi cloud issues there. But the reality is, not every workload's gone there yet. A lot of analytics going on in the cloud. Yep. Dev test, okay, check the box on dev test. That's right. Analytics is all the ball game right now in, this, in terms of state of the art. Your thoughts on the trends in how companies are using the cloud for analytics and things that are challenges and opportunities? Yeah, I, I think there's, I think the analytics story in the cloud is a little bit earlier. I think that the transaction processing and the new applications and the new architectures and the new integrations, certainly if you're going to build a new project, you're going to do that in the cloud. But I think the analytics um, you know, stack, first of all, there's a data gravity. Right, you know, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of gravity to that data and moving it all into the cloud. And so if your transaction processing, your behavioral apps are in the cloud, then it makes sense to keep the data in an AWS or in the cloud. Um, conversely, you know, if it's not, then you're not going to take a whole bunch of data that sits on-prem and move it whole hog all the way to the cloud just because, right? That's super <laughs> expensive, yeah. you've got legacy A lot of risk too on a lot of the governance and a lot of compliance stuff as well. That's exactly right. I mean, if you're trying to comply with Basel II or GDPR, and you know, you <laughs> want to manage all that privacy information, how are you going to do that if you're going to move your data at the same time? Yeah. Um, and so it's a tough, Great point. tough, it's a tough move. I think, I think from our perspective, and I think this is really important, you know, we, we, we sort of say, look, in a world where data is going to be on-prem, on the cloud, you know, in BI tools, in databases, in NoSQL databases, on Hadoop, you know, you're going to have data everywhere. And in that world where data is going to be in multiple locations and multiple technologies, you got to figure out a way to manage all so, of that. I mean, data sprawls all over the place. It's a big problem. Oh, and so, and by the way, people, that's a good thing. Store tier two storage is getting cheaper and cheaper. Data lakes are popping out, but you have data lake sprawl. You have data everywhere. That's right. How are you looking at that problem as a startup, and how are customers dealing with that? And and what what is this a real issue, or is this still too early to? To talk oh, about data it's, sprawl. it's a real issue. I mean, so you know, we liken it to the advent of the internet uh, in the time of traditional media, right? So you had you had traditional media. There were single sort of authoritative sources. We all watched, you know, maybe CNN, maybe CBS. We had the nightly news. We had Newsweek. We got our information. All of a sudden, the internet comes along, and anybody can blog about anything, mm -hmm. right? And so the cost of creating information is now this much lower. Anybody can create any reality. Anybody can store data anywhere, right? And so now you've got a world where with Tableau, with Hadoop, with Redshift, you can build any stack you want to at any cost. And so now what do you do? Because everybody's creating their own thing, every dev is doing their own thing, everybody's got new databases, new applications, you know, software is eating the world, <laughs> right? And, and data is eating software. And data is eating software. And so now you've got this problem where you're like, look, I, I've got all this stuff and I don't know, I don't know what's fake news, what's real, what's alternative fact, what doesn't make any sense. And so you've got a signal to noise problem. And yeah. I think in that world, um, you, you got to figure out how, how to get to truth, right? Yeah. And, and, and so, what's the answer to that in your mind? I mean, if there's a, not this, you have the answer, if you did, <laughs> we'd be solving it better. Yeah, but totally. I mean, directionally, where's the vector going in your mind? I, mean, I try to you know, talk to Paul Martino about this at Bullpen Capital. He's a total analytics geek. He, he doesn't think this big data can solve that yet, but you're starting to see some science around trying to solve these problems with data. What's your vision on this? Yeah, I, I, yeah, so I, you know, I believe that every, I think, I think that every developer is going to start building applications based on data. I think that every business person is going to have an analytical role in their job because mm -hmm. if they're not dealing with the world and the certainty and they're not using all the evidence at their at their disposable, they're not going to disposal. They're not making yeah. you know the best decisions, and obviously they're going to be more and more analysts. And so you know, at some level, everybody's an analyst. In I my wrote mind. a post in 2008, my old blog when I was hosted on WordPress before I started SiliconANGLE. Data is the new developer kit. That's right. saw that early, and it was still not as clear as it is now, as obvious as at least to us, because we're in the middle of in this industry. But it's 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 a now part of the software fabric. It's like a, it's like a library, mm -hmm. like like as a developer, you'd call a library of code software to come in and be part of your your program, yeah. <laughs> right? Building blocks approach, Lego blocks. But now data as Lego blocks completely changes the game on things. If you think of it about that way, where, where are we on that notion of you really using data as a development? Uh, component. I mean, it seems to be early. I don't haven't seen any proof points that says, well, that company's actually using the data programmatically with software. 
Yeah, I, I think that, no, well, I mean, look, I think there's features in almost every software application, whether it's, you know, 27% of the people clicked on this button and did this particular thing. I mean, that's a data-based application, yeah. right? And so I think there is this notion that we talk a lot about, which is data literacy, right? And, and so that's kind of a weird thing. So what does mm -hmm. that exactly mean? Well, data is, is, is just information like a news article is information, and you got to decide whether it's good or it's bad and whether you can come to a conclusion or whether you can't. Just as if you're using an API from a third-party developer, you need documentation. Yeah. You need context about that data, yeah. and people have to be intelligent about how they use it. Yeah, and literacy is also make, make, makes it makes it addressable. That's right. If you have knowledge about data, at some point it's it's named and addressed, and at some point in a network, yeah. right? <laughs> you know, yeah. especially data in motion. I mean, data lakes I get, data at rest. But when you start getting into data in motion, real-time data, every piece of data counts, right? That's exactly right. And so now you've got to teach people about how to use this stuff. You've got to give them the right data. You got to make that discoverable. You got to make that information usable. You've got to get people to know who the experts are about the data so they can ask questions. Yeah. Um, you know, these are tougher problems, especially as you get more and more systems online. All right, as a, as a, as a startup, you're a growing startup. You guys are, are lean and mean, doing well. You have to go compete in this, in this uh, war, it's a lot of, you know, a lot of big whales in there. I mean, you got Oracle, SAP, IBM, they're all trying to transform. Everybody's transforming, all the incumbent yeah. winners, um, potential buyers of your company or potentially you displacing them <laughs> as a young CEO. You'd be like, hey, you know, we're going to eat some of their lunch. You have to go compete in a, in a big game. How yeah. are you guys looking at that competition? Obviously, you're focused, so I know a little bit about your plan, but take us through the mindset of a, of a startup CEO that has to go into this world you guys have to be good. I mean, this is a, these are big waves here. It's a big wave. Yeah, nobody buys from a startup unless you get, you know, and, and a startup could be even a person, you know, a company less than 100, 200 people. I mean, you know, nobody's buying from a company unless there's a 10x return to value relative to the next best option. Right, and so in that world, how do you build 10x value? Well, one, you got to have great, great technology. You know, mm -hmm. that, that's the start point. But, but the other thing is you've got to have deep focus on your customers, right? And mm -hmm. so I think from our perspective, we build focus by just saying, look, Nobody understands data in your company. And by and large, you've got to make money by understanding this data. As you do this digital transformation stuff, a big part of that is differentiating and making better yeah. products and optimizing based upon understanding your data, because that helps you and your business make better decisions. Yeah. And so what we're going to do is help you understand that data better and faster than any other company can do. You really got to pick your shots, but what you're saying, if I hear you saying is, as a startup, you got to hit, see the beachhead segment you want to own. That's right. And own it. That's exactly No right. other decision, just get it, and then maybe get to a bigger scope later and sequence around and grow it that yeah, way. Yeah, you can't solve you can't 10 be problems. Groping, you can't be groping for a, uh, yeah. a beachhead. If you don't know what you want, you're never going to get it. That's right, I mean, you can't solve 10 problems unless you solve one, <laughs> right? And, and so, you know, I think, I think we're at a phase where we've proven that we can scalably solve one. We've got customers like, you know, Pfizer and Intuit and Citrix and Tesco and Tesla and eBay and Munich Reinsurance. And so these are all, you know, uh, amazing brands that are traditionally difficult to sell into. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I think, I think from our perspective, it's really about focus and just helping customers that are making that digital analytical transformation, do it faster and do it by enabling their people. We had a lot going on this week for events. We had Informatica World this week, we got Veeamon, we had Google I.O., we had Sapphire, There's a variety of other events going on. But I want to ask you kind of more of a uh, entrepreneurial industry question, which is, um, if we're going through this so-called digital transformation, that means a new modern era will be transformed, an old one would be transformed. Yet I go to every event and everyone's number one at something. It's like, I was just at Informatica, they got, they're number one in six quadrants, Michael Dell, we're number one in every category. <laughs> Mark Hurd at the press meeting said, they're number one in all categories. I mean, the Ross Perot quote about, you could be number one, depends how you slice the market, seems to be in play. My point is, I kind of get a little bit, you know, weirded out by that. Because okay, you know, I guess the Cube's number one in overall live videos produced at an enterprise event. You know, so we're number one in something. But my you point are. is, my point you is, really are. in a new transformation, what is the new scoreboard going to look like? Because a lot of the things that you're talking about is horizontally integrated. There's new use cases developing. A new environment is coming online. So if someone wanted to actually try to keep score of who number one is and who's yeah. winning. Um, besides customer wins, because that's clearly a one that you can point to and say, hey, they're winning customers, customer growth is good. Outside of customer growth, what do you think will be the key uh, requirements to get some sort of metric on who's really doing well vis-a-vis -vis others? I mean, is there, we're not yet 
there with horses yeah, on the track. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a tough problem. I mean, I mean, you know, it used to be the world was that nobody gets fired for choosing choosing IBM, yeah. right? <laughs> and and I think I think that that brand credibility uh, worked in a world where you could be conservative, right? Uh, mm. In this world, I think that looking for those measures is going to be really tough. And I think on some level, that that quest for looking for what is number one or who is the best is actually the the, the sort of fool's errand. And if that's what you're looking for, if you're looking for, you know, what's yeah. the best answer for me based upon social signal, you know, it's kind yeah. of like, you know, I'm going to go do the, what the popular kids do in high school. I mean, that, yeah. that, that, could, that could lead to, you know, a path, but it doesn't lead to the one that's going to actually get you yeah. satisfaction. Yeah. Um, and so on some level, I think that customers like you are the best signal, yeah. you know, yeah. always. Yeah, I mean it's hard. I mean it's a rhetorical question we ask it because, you know, we're trying to see not necessarily go about the fa the fa I call it the fashion fashion way. Oh, what's yeah. fashionable? Yeah, um, that's different. I mean, talk about like really a key metric. In the old days, market share was one. Actually, IDC used to track who had market shares, and they would say based upon the number of shipments products, this is the market share winner, right? Yeah, that's pretty clean. I mean, that's fairly clean. So just what would it be now? Number of instances. I mean, it's so hard to figure out. Anyway, I digress. Um, no, no, I think that's right. I mean, I think I think it's really tough, but I think customers customer stories that that sort of map to your case. Yeah, it all comes back good. down to customer wins. How many customers you have? What's the what's the growth? yeah? And how much value are they getting out of your stuff? Yeah, that ten x right. value, and I think that's the multiplier minimum, if not more. And with cloud and some of the scale that's happening, you agree? Yeah, it's only going to get better. Okay, thanks for coming on the cube. We have Satya and Sangani, CEO, co-founder of Alation. Great startup, follow them on Twitter. These guys got some really good focus learning about your data because once you understand the data hygiene, you can start thinking about ethics and all the cool stuff happening with data. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. More coverage with Sapphire after this short break.